Katie yeah. Wilkes Delegate is in the studio, the Berkeley County prosecuting attorney. Good morning, Katie. Good morning. I, um, a, a series of events came together to make me slightly behind this morning, and as I was driving here, I was thinking, I am not going to get credit for those radon test kits. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. You want them? Oh, it's okay. It's okay. okay. All right. Yeah, you don't you don't get the uh, the full credit for the radon test kit today. I got them last time, so you know, got to share the share the credit. Yeah, I got two prosecuting attorneys in I the know. room. You almost got a quorum. You know, which yeah. should make Gilstrap and I a little nervous. It, well, you, yeah. We can make you an honorary prosecutor for today. Oh, you you don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've read your books. I, you're exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot to unpack on that one there. Yeah, uh, Katie, we were doing a, a segment uh, earlier. Um, I think I, I guess it was this week uh, in regards to what happens at the other end of uh, children prosecutions and, and such. And you texted me and said, I've got some information on that. Uh, if you could kind of go back and set this whole thing up for us. Sure. So I just um, there was there's been a lot of discussion of um, children who are accused of uh, making threats of school shootings and um the, the sheriff was on and rightfully so talked about how seriously these things are taken and um, there were some questions about uh, what happens on on the other end and mm -hmm. so I thought I could maybe explain a little bit of course um, all juvenile proceedings are confidential and the overwhelming majority of proceedings against juveniles stay that way they stay in juvenile court there it's never publicized we can never really know anything about it um, but I, I did want to talk about my office's approach, which is, you know, a, take action first and, and then we can, you know, do the investigation. Our, our primary focus, our first and greatest concern is making sure that everyone is safe. Uh, everyone in the school, the juvenile in question, everyone is safe. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about it. when a juvenile is detained, they have uh, a detention hearing, they have the opportunity for bond, just like they're an adult, their parents are involved. Um, but I also wanted to talk about how the overwhelming um, goal of the juvenile system is rehabilitation, which you know can range from counseling services locally to placement at residential facilities. Detention is sort of a, a last resort. Um, and that when they consider whether a juvenile does get bond, um, they rely heavily on psychological evaluations and experts to determine what level of security services can be safely offered, their risk assessments, that's what goes into it. There was a comment made, um, I'm not sure if who made it, but about, you know, I don't want this kid to get a life sentence for drawing a picture of a gun. And I right. kind of, I thought it that was, I thought it was you. <laughs> and I, I, I His books have illustrations too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just wanted everyone to understand, you know, I, I don't want anybody to hesitate um, reporting something that concerns them because that's never going to happen. For one thing, there is no such thing as a true life sentence for a juvenile. I've been on here before and talked about how no matter what happens, you know, even if, the worst happens and they murder someone they're they're eligible for parole after 15 years no matter what but you know that that's just not how this works it's not like it they're the kid might get asked some questions but then there'll be a security assessment and risk assessment and you know if it's if if there's some things going on at home they'll get some services um but I just want everybody to understand that you know the safety of the school community uh as a whole is is paramount here so is it cause for alarm if there's a kid sitting at his desk and he's sketching out a gun? You know, just is, is that something that uh, you should report to a teacher or to a principal or something? I, I think that it depends on the context. Mm -hmm. um, you know, is, is the gun pointing at someone in their drawing? You know, that's something that we've we've seen that's been of concern um, is when they're actually drawing a, a plan if you will that mm -hmm. that is cause for concern that is something that should be reported i'm not saying you should go around and report everybody that's ever drawn something inappropriate i'm just saying if if you think there's cause for concern you know report it make sure that everybody is safe and i don't want anybody to think that you know we're going to escalate things to uh, uh you know lock up a nine-year-old for 50 years right exactly yeah. what 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 is the age definition of a juvenile in west virginia so a juvenile's under 18 um but juveniles 13 and under are presumed to be incompetent meaning that um 
we can briefly detain them if they do something, but then they have to have an evaluation to determine if they're competent to move forward. Um, and many times they're not, which basically means they can't be detained. We can still get them services. We can still have them work with a uh, probation officer um, and uh, you know a address any issues that come up with them, but they don't they don't go to detention. So a seventeen year old fits that description as well. A seventeen year old would go to uh, could go to detention. A seventeen, but, but they're still considered a juvenile. Oh yeah, though. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're still considered a juvenile. But in, in West Virginia, by law, they could get married at the age of sixteen and be considered an adult. Isn't that fascinating? That's not, not on you, Katie. You're not in the, you're not in the uh, legislature. Matt, is the Jefferson County approach of what Katie's talking about similar? Oh yes, absolutely, absolutely. We're we're in the same judicial circuit for now. But yeah, the, for, now. for now, yeah. <laughs> Telling get rid of Katie. Behind. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're separating. Um, no, absolutely. Public safety is paramount. And, and really, this, she's exactly right. This is an opportunity to intervene and bring services to a child. And, and, and with the goal is to make them well adjusted so that we don't see them in circuit court one day or, or magistrate court when they're an adult. And, you know, quite frankly, you, you might not have a, a bad kid you know, there is no such thing as a bad kid there might be some bad parents but but there might be some parents that are just lacking um in resources or knowledge of of a particular issue that a child may have that that our experts and the people that we work with on a day in day out basis will recognize and spot and so it is it's a it's a great opportunity to help mr gilstrap I, I i am the one who brought this up before and my concerns are several fold actually uh the, the context we were talking about in, in terms of, of ruining a kid's future with finger quotes, right? <clears throat> and I knew that there was no lifetime sentence for, for a juvenile, but it's a big thing for a parent or anyone who, who loves another person. It doesn't have to just be with a kid. It could be, you know, the, the, the drug abusing spouse. I think it's really hard to, to drop the dime and say, hey, I, I think... I think my kid might be a mass murderer. Can you come and check it out? I mean, that's 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 a big deal. And I think in in my imagination, that's what I do for a living, right? This sets this sets in motion a series of events that can't be turned off because once that call is made, it can't be unmade. And once the accusation, the possibility is out there, it has to be investigated. And now we start digging deeper and deeper into what could be completely innocent the kind of stories that I wrote that this really is, I've, I was not an unstable kid, but I did write those kinds of stories when I was growing up. And I worry now that kids don't have the freedom to do that. He was a little bit unstable. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I definitely understand where you're coming from, which is part of why I wanted to address that everything that happens to a juvenile stays confidential. I mean, yes, there's, there's a process that begins in terms of investigating it and making sure if they need services, they get those services. But um, like I said, the overwhelming majority of the time, um, everything's going to stay in juvenile court. It won't be transferred to circuit court. It won't be public. Um, most of what we're talking about isn't eligible for transfer to circuit court to, to be public. And, you know, I, I, I definitely see where you're coming from in terms of being able to write creative stories and um, things like that. But I also, you have to balance that with public safety and make sure that if there's something concerning uh, in that story that it's at least checked out. Um, and, and I know that's a difficult balance to reach, but that's a balance we have to reach right now. And at the age of 18, if you're in the system as a juvenile, maybe you did something before you were 13, uh, what happens to you at the age of 18? If you're already in the system, um, if you can stay in under the jurisdiction of the juvenile court until you're 21 and everything will still be treated as a juvenile matter where it's confidential and that. But then once you reach that age, we have we no longer have jurisdiction. If you repeat offend at say 19, are you still under that juvenile umbrella or are you now an adult? You're now an adult. Okay. I want to go back to the, I made the joke about the age 16 marriage thing, but, I, but this, uh, I'm wondering what the complications are for the two of you in these situations. So you're not an adult in West Virginia until you're 18. You're considered a juvenile at 17 and under. But the age of consent in West Virginia is 16. And we now know you can get married at 16. So what's the complication in prosecuting these things of sexual nature for those who are under the age of 18 
because of the difference in the inconsistencies in the consent, marriage, and adult and juvenile law. I think the um, biggest area where that comes into play is the um, marriage exception to the sexual abuse definition, which is yeah. something that, you know, as our, our association has been, I guess, um, active in working with the senators who tried to eliminate the, the marriage loophole, but mm-hmm. continually unsuccessful with that. Um, can you so what what exactly I guess the complications come in there where marriage is essentially a defense to sexual abuse is that um is that right though I mean just because you're married to somebody doesn't give you the right to rape them so it's a defense to sexual abuse not sexual assault okay and so, the difference of that is what um this is getting a little heavy for a morning radio show, but the difference... Hey, he brought in a guest who was talking about ripping vocal cords out a couple weeks ago. So, <laughs> so the, the difference there is um, penetration. Mm-hmm. So sexual abuse is uh, uh, forcible touching, basically. Okay. And, and marriage is a defense of that? To the touching, not the penetration. Really? So yes. if you tell your spouse, don't touch me, and they touch you anyway, there's no defense for that because you're married? Correct. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. We, that's, that's, we, that's and it, it happened in Jefferson County. We had to dismiss some charges based on that exact fact, fact really? scenario. Yeah. I'm fascinated. And it by was, that. and you know, the, when you hear the, the, well, we don't want to criminalize this. It's like, well, it, it, you could have some uh, playful uh, husband, wife, p- patting on the rear end or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that could, you could end up in prison. That is absolute it's junk. It's not going to happen. That's junk. Yeah. It's it, this is, you know, th- these this faction area was extremely horrible <laughs> mm-hmm. of what what this wife was sub- subjected to. It was like a terrorizing event. You know, I'm not going to get into it, but it was it was not just playful banter. And none of it's criminal. Well, well to a degree, it's not criminal. Right. That, with the exception, you know, when, what, how Katie described it. <laughs> Yeah, splitting hairs with your jobs has got to be difficult here. It, it, it is. It is. It yeah. is. It's it's what we, you know, I, for myself, you know, and, and I know Katie, like all prosecutors just, we're very mindful. And, and you, you have you have these words on a page that, that represent, here's the criminal conduct that, you, that we don't allow in West Virginia. And then you have, a, your fact scenario is never going to match up exactly with that. Mm-hmm. So it's, you know. It's like putting, okay, here's this element. Do we have something there, 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 there? You work through it like that. Is, is that typical law for every state, what you're describing here? Is that fairly unique? Is it something the legislature should address? I think there was, wasn't it wasn't in like 20 some states had had that in it, maybe? I think so. We're not, we're not the only state. But we're not in the majority, right? to my knowledge. So I'm going to infer from that 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 should probably be addressed by the legislature in some form? Uh, Senator Trump has been running a bill to address that for the past yes. couple sessions. And he tried to, even this time, amend it in. It failed his Judiciary Committee in the Senate. It was it was struck down and uh, or tabled. But, it, you know, procedurally, it was defeated there. And then he tried to um, amend it into a, a separate bill that wasn't on that point and it was found not germane and kicked out by the unfortunate you know for the senate chair had to or senate president had to there was a motion made just to remove it from that consideration because it wasn't germane to the present bill and so it went down technically like that i think people are really hesitant to bring legislation inside the front door at all of, of a home and then when you start bringing it inside the bedroom door people it just gets very unnerving it's it's difficult to talk about first of all and it's it's not it, i think it seems intrusive i'm not arguing one way or the other but i certainly understand why legislation like this has has a hard time getting through i want to get back to but the, we're not talking about playful touching here we're talking about as, as matt and katie have pointed out almost the terrorizing of a human being well, that's covered we, by marriage think about how we opened this segment mm-hmm. we talked about uh, switches and we talked about you know <laughs> the old school discipline which now i presume is assault and battery right we can the stuff we were talking about was is all felonious activity in to in today's world my childhood was filled with with child abuse which I don't think ever crossed that line. I was never hit that I didn't actually deserve it. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, I can see that. <laughs> and, and, and earned it, actually. Auditioned for it. Uh, so 
I hate the phrase slippery slope, but it's the one that comes to mind. That once once you start the ball rolling on this inside the house prosecution, it's it's all it comes down to discretion. When is the playful touch really a slap or go the other way around? Uh, that's all. Somebody's got to make that call. And I, I think it's from a legislative point of view, as this is why I'm not a politician, I think that it would be very difficult to invite that in. It, it's the, the wording of it has to be so careful. Uh, another area I'll, I'll point out where there's some, some, some problems is with the age is, you know, the age of consent is 16, which means a 16 year old can marry a 50 year old, 40 year old, 30 year old, 22 year old, whatever. Um, I think but, they passed a law that made a four-year difference max now. Well, either way, if, if you if you're under the age of eighteen and you have a boy, let's say you have a boyfriend or girlfriend, you're seventeen years old. You have a boyfriend and it's, or girlfriend is nineteen years old, and you send them a, a a photo, a risque photo. You know, that's possession of child porn for the re- receiver. Yeah, it's it's um, legal for. Uh, 19 year old to have sex with a 17 year old but it's a felony for a 19 year old to have a video of that 17 year old that yeah is, or a picture that is yeah. just really inconsistent yes the yes. act is okay the evidence is not well you know john used the word discretion and that i i would venture to say not to speak for matt but that is a huge part of of, of our jobs is mm-hmm. discretion the uh, negligent homicide bill that I know that you were working on. I presume, Katie, you had some input in that, too. Did that die, or did that become law? It went to House Judiciary, and it never it never saw committee. So we can keep mowing kids down and get off the school bus with our cars and not worry about it. Yeah. Drag, awesome. ra- drag racing uh, with no consequences is still legal in West Virginia. Yeah, it's... and. To be clear, that this is Matt's baby, if you will. Um, he has worked really hard on this and worked really hard with our legislators. Um, but I, I can't imagine there's any prosecutor who hasn't seen um, the effects of our laws. It currently stands. Um, we have a we've had a number of cases with very upset family members coming in saying, you know, this is the absolute maximum you can get. We have. We, we have a person who the defendant um, pled guilty to the only potential charge in that scenario is facing up to a year in uh, jail. And that victim is still constantly very upset with the outcome in that case. And I've, you know, I've been telling them, contact your legislators. You know, there's, uh, I mean, there's nothing we can do presently, but there's certainly an avenue to change that moving forward. And that's what Matt's been spearheading. What is the other side of that argument? They they think that what's going to happen is these hypothetical situations. I guess they don't trust local prosecutors to use their discretion, but uh, you're going to be going 56 and a 55 and call and cause an accident and someone dies and you're going to go you're going to be a felon for that. And there's p- sufficient guardrails in our Supreme Court and our case law and that that do not allow just a. a just the simple act of a technical violation of a driving statute isn't enough to get to that level of a felony and it it's not enough they just are afraid of uh well this year through the senate it did it did come out committee and it passed unanimously and it just couldn't get any traction in the house despite um a lot of pressure paul espinosa especially pullet was you know um talking to more capito delegate capito about running it running it running it. He, he and a lot of the other local legislatures up here were putting a lot of pressure to get that out let's get a vote on it let's see where everybody stands so as of today let's say uh <clears throat> i leave here i get stuck behind a school bus i'm not in the mood to get stuck behind a school bus the heck with this i hit the gas accelerate go past the school bus and in the process hit a six-year-old kill the six-year-old what's the maximum doing in jail so that is different because there is a specific code for failing to yield to a school bus and causing bodily injury that makes that a felony but if you take the school bus out of the scenario the max is i believe 12 months in jail which 
She six is months. actually six months. Yeah, so like in a constru- so if I run over a pedestrian like crossing the crosswalk. If you're if you're drag racing and you lose control of your vehicle, you're going 120, you lose your and and, and there's a, a, a mother and their family and a father walking along the road and you and you go and you kill all of them. You get, you know there's four people there, four misdemeanors. So is it one year apiece? Yeah. Which again is actually six months with because you get credit day for day credit. All right, so six months in exchange for it's six months for your for doing something or in a construction zone. If you come through a construction zone, one hundred twenty miles an hour. Yeah, and, and, I'm not, and I'm take not, out a flagman. I'm not talking about your someone you know loses their control of their car beside you in the rain. They hit you and you spin off and hit somebody and kill them. That's clearly not your fault, and you weren't right. doing anything wrong to do it. I'm talking about two people drag racing 120 miles yeah. an hour and mow down pedestrians. That's worth six months. That, and that's the thing is like like well they didn't mean to kill anybody. Of course they didn't. That's not what you're charging. It'd be murder if you if you intentionally took your car and struck someone to kill them. Um, this is but you intentionally do the act that leads to the accident. Right. And, and and just a total disregard of traffic laws and safety of others should be a felony. I agree. No doubt. Katie, yeah. final thoughts from you. Oh, gosh. Uh, today went quickly, and that's also partially my fault. I just wanted to keep you on your toes and make sure you could ad-lib for a couple minutes. Well, we're, um, we got that. I got, <laughs> I got gill strap. <laughs> um, I just want everybody to understand that um, our law enforcement, my office, take the uh, safety of children and the people in our schools as paramount. That's the the most important thing. And as always, um, you know, we're we're here to serve the public. So my door is open. If anybody has questions, they can always call or stop in, and um, I'm I'm happy to address them. And I uh, appreciate the opportunity to come on and uh, talk with you guys. I was hoping to talk about the outcome of our. Um, murder trial last week but we will have to save that for another day if you'd like to take a minute to sum it up go right ahead it was a um guilty and we got a no mercy verdict within three and a half minutes uh which i think in large part was because the defendant had a prior murder conviction (laughs) three three and a half minutes that might be a record. It's a deliberation. You can't get people to agree on a lunch menu in three and a half minutes. <laughs> exactly. Well, when you present somebody who, you know, stopped on the, the side of the road and, and killed somebody with a shotgun and they had two prior felonies for murder and kidnapping to commit robbery, it's uh, – it, it, we, we had a lot to work with. What, the, but, but those convictions weren't in West Virginia? Or? California. Okay. Okay. I, yeah. I think that was important to say. Yeah. Yeah. Th- those were from California. We, we didn't let this guy back out. And now he's never going to get out. Good, good stuff. Thanks. Right. Appreciate Thank it, Katie. Katie Wilkes-Delegetti, Berkeley County Prosecuting Attorney.